Now, there was no shortage of inspiration at Dublin's Convention Centre for the Leia Healthcare Pendulum Summit yesterday. Their keynote speaker was none other than Canadian astronaut and adopted Irishman Chris Hatfield. Anna Daly caught up with a man who uh, gave us a brilliant insight into the fascinating world of life aboard the International Space Station. Here's how she got on. This is ground control to Major Tom. In the most talked about music video of 2013, Commander Chris Hadfield gave us his revised version of David Bowie's Space Oddity as he himself floated aboard the International Space Station with the Earth literally rotating below him. This is major time to ground control. gave us the most fun and innovative science lessons and the world's most talked about music video. Yes, legendary astronaut Chris Hadfield is the keynote speaker at today's Leia Healthcare Pendulum Summit taking place here at the Convention Centre in Dublin. And I have an appointment with the commander himself. Commander Hadfield, it is an honour to meet you. <laughs> it's a delight to meet you. Thank you very much for your time today. I know you're an extremely busy man and in demand. You must be the most social media savvy astronaut ever <laughs> to leave Earth. <laughs> People have said that for sure. I, uh, I, I flew in space three times and it is such a magnificently rare human experience. It's new to see our world that way and to see our world in the solar system, in the universe that way and to have the ability to share it now with the, the, uh, the spread and, and the depth and the reach of social media was, was just a wonderful treat. Of course, it's a world that we're particularly fascinated about but lo know very little about it as well. Uh, so you gave us science lessons like we'd never <laughs> had before. Uh, because they're li daily routine, basic things. If you change one major variable, like you remove gravity, it makes you rethink everything. You, and when you start rethinking the mundane, then that's the real spark of imagination. If you realize that just taking a sip of water is going to be different, or whatever, brushing your teeth is different, then what else is different? And what else could you do up there? And what happens with with all sorts of things? What happens with flow of fluids and flame? And, and, and it, it's a real spark of imagination. So let me get a ball of water here. There's a nice ball of water floating on the end. Shut off the straw very carefully. Okay, and get my toothbrush wet. Toothbrushes soak up water nicely. I'm going to suck the water off it because where else would it go? Nice wet toothbrush, grab some toothpaste. We just use standard toothpaste in space. Squeeze a little on, not too much because you're going to have to clean it up later. Okay, so there's my toothpaste on my toothbrush. It's wet, it's ready to go, it's loaded. Brush my teeth just like normal. Well, my favorite of all of the videos is the crying video. Yeah, so yeah. you can cry in space, but the tears don't fall. Yeah, in fact, the tears come from the duct right up here, up underneath your eyelid. It's a modified sweat uh, gland, and, and they come down, and of course they drain through the tear duct or, or across your cheek. Without gravity, uh, it just stays. There's nowhere for it to drive to go, so your nose won't run and your tears don't fall, and you just have a bigger and bigger tear. And, and even something as simple as that is, is somehow both uh, uh, a little bit provocative in thought, but also poetic. Were you surprised by the appetite out there for, for this information and for these science I, lessons? I've been an astronaut for uh, 21 years, and so I've seen direct evidence of the appetite my mm. whole life. I've spoken at thousands of schools around the world, uh, a, a lot across Canada, of course, and I've seen the direct interest and appetite and, and fueling of imagination. But it's been so difficult on my previous two space flights to directly feed that appetite because of the delays and the distance and the uh, complexity. But now, with the, uh, with the almost real-time broadband communication that, that the space station has, and also the capability something like the space station has, mm -hmm. it allowed uh, a direct feeding of that appetite, but also a feedback to me of, of what people were truly interested in. And that was a real privilege, That's and that amazing. made a really big difference in people's understanding, not only of what the space station is for, 
but a look back at, at a perspective of ourselves, which is probably even more important. You also gave us the coolest m music video <laughs> we have ever seen, yeah. Chris. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, at what point did you decide, I'm going to do this? This is a cool idea. Uh, I recorded a Christmas carol that uh, my brother and I had written called Jewel in the Night. And my son released it through social media, and tens of thousands of people heard that. And as soon as they learned there was a musician on board, uh, people started uh, asking with a louder and louder voice to do Space Oddity, which surprised me. I'd never covered Space Oddity before. I've been a musician my whole life, but that was new. And so it was really at the insistence of my son and then sort of just a, a little side project, an evening project. I made an audio recording and then got permission from Bowie to make the video. And it was just kind of a, a lot of work for my son on the ground to put it all together. And at the last minute, just got it done and released it, not through any great plan, but released it just before we came home, but to a phenomenal worldwide reaction. Hundreds of millions of people have seen that video. And, and Bowie himself said it was, uh, the best cover ever of that song. So, so huge high praise. But also, I think it's important, the space station is a wonderful laboratory, unprecedented, but at the same time, it, it is an extension of where people uh, exist. Uh, it's an extension of our culture. Mm -hmm. And to be able to show that it's not just robots in a laboratory, but it's people uh, helping to understand ourselves in a new place. That, that is a different facet of it. And I think that song, even though it was just you know, uh, an evening project with my son. I think that song helped show people that. Of course it did, yeah, it was just brilliant. Before we let you go, you've been a appointed ambassador for Irish tourism today. Yes. What does that mean to you, Chris? Uh, I've, I've seen the world like very few people. Um, I've been around it 2,500 times and, and uh, really got to know it um, at, maybe differently than most people see it. It's not even like a globe or a map where, where it looks somehow sort of two-dimensional and, and artificial, but to really start to see the whole planet as a living, functioning, ancient, thriving um, being, a living uh, construct uh, where we are all sort of crew and passengers on board. Mm -hmm. You get to see and feel the world that way. And so you really see the special places as you come around. And as you come across the Atlantic, uh, because our orbit sort of apex is just over uh, Ireland, um, you end up seeing Ireland uh, as as a reward for crossing the Atlantic uh, all really? the time. You, no matter where you start, you come up and you arch across and there's Ireland in the distance. And uh, on a clear day like today, uh, and nothing looks more beautiful than the green after you've come across the blue. My daughter has lived here for years and uh, is going to be uh, finishing up at Trinity here in Dublin in the next year or two. Um, my wife and I have visited here several times. It's just a, a beautiful, historic part of the world. Uh, so much of the culture of, of the uh, civilized world is reflected and, and, and uh, stored and created and, and flourishing here. It's just a, a beautiful place to be part of. And uh, I'm delighted at, at the give and take, the back and forth, the conversations we had from orbit, the reaction of the people. Uh, and so to, even though I'm not originally from here, um, I don't think you have to be from somewhere to truly appreciate it. And maybe even a set of eyes that's new on a place sees it in, in a slightly different way, maybe more appreciatively. So I'm delighted to be in the role to help be an ambassador for such a beautiful place and, and such good people. And we're very proud to have you here. We want you to go off and enjoy Ireland. Oh, I, I know will. today is a work day, <laughs> yeah. but you're here with your wife, Helena, yeah. and you're going to have some fun while you're in Ireland as well, I hope. We are indeed. Uh, we'll be uh, celebrating my, my daughter and her boyfriend's uh, dissertation uh, defense. Uh, we will do some touring up in the North End. Uh, uh, a chance, I think, to play some music, um, maybe to try a little uh, beer and whiskey, and, uh, and and meet as many people as possible. So yeah, we're looking forward to Will the entire keep us experience. Will you posted on Twitter? Absolutely. Uh, Twitter is a great way to share a personal experience, to share uh, an honest perspective, especially of a new place. So yes, absolutely, That's I will. Brilliant. We look forward to it. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thanks, Anna. Very nice Hadfield. to talk to you. Thank Thanks. you. Clever move getting him to be an ambassador for Ireland from a tourism point Very of view. Very clever move. You'd imagine he probably had better offers. But well, he's got a lot of growth no, for Ireland, uh, Kiri. Yeah, There's yeah, a connection yeah. there.